What's up everybody, it's Mike AK RivTech coming at you with another tutorial to help you improve your stream. This time we're going to cover audio. Audio is probably one of the most important parts of streaming. You could have excellent gameplay footage, high quality video. If your microphone sounds like garbage, it's going to be unappealing to somebody watching you. I'm going to cover what I believe to be the best filters and I'm going to show you how to adjust them and I'm also going to provide you with a plugin that you can use to make your microphone sound better. This will work with any XLR microphone and any USB microphone. Before we get started, make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this and to follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash RivTech. Let's get started. These are the settings that I personally recommend. You can use them as a baseline and adjust left or right based on your personal preference. Let's get started. First thing you're going to do is go down to your microphone source. It's going to be right here on the bottom. You're going to click this little cog wheel and then you're going to find filters. Click on that. And if you've never been into the filters in OBS before, it looks the same in Streamlabs, except it's green in the background. You'll go to this little plus sign down at the bottom. Click the plus sign and you can pick whichever filter you want to use, click gain. We'll go over to gain and it'll appear on the side. Once you add it right here, my gain is at five, negative 5.6 DBs. Normally it's recommended that you do about negative five. What gain is, is how much audio your microphone picks up. You always want to start out low. When you put the gain too high, you'll have a muffled voice and your microphone will pick up all of the audio around you. So if you've ever seen those old modern warfare two videos where somebody hits a crazy snipe and on the kill cram, they're screaming at the top of their lungs. That's what it's going to sound like if you ever gain too high. Next, we're going to go to noise suppression. What noise suppression is, is it blocks out background noise. You'll have to adjust this based on your background. For instance, if you have a loud computer, a mechanical keyboard, a fan, a car outside, kids in the background, uh, your noise suppression will have to be adapted for that. Start off at negative 30 and test it out with your keyboard until you can't hear any clicks anymore. So mine is about negative 45. And what I mean by that is if I move up right here, watch my microphone without me talking. If you start at zero, you'll be able to hear my keyboard. You notice how you can hear that really loud. I'll go down to like negative 15. Go to negative 30, which is what I recommend to start at. Starts getting a little lower, negative 40. You can notice the bar is a little bit lower. And then 45, what I sit at. And you can't hear it anymore. Make sure when you're testing this that you're not speaking into the microphone because it will make the bar go up and it'll detect your voice and you won't get an accurate reading. So make sure you're quiet when you do that test. All right, so the next thing we're gonna add is noise gate. Remember, again, just a reminder, go down to the bottom, the filters, noise gate right here. And what noise gate is, it works alongside noise suppression. Noise gate will tell your microphone at which decibel level to start picking up noise and at what decibel level to turn it off. So if you notice right here, you have closed threshold and open threshold. We'll start with open threshold first. I have mine set to negative 25 dB. Open threshold is the audio level in decibels in which your mic will begin to pick up noise. Anything above this decibel level will be picked up by the mic. So for instance, if you're whispering really quietly and you, you won't be able to hear your voice being picked up, but then if you start to talk louder, it'll pick it up. It works the same principle as the keyboard that we just did. So I start mine off at negative 25. Next, close threshold at the top. I have it set to negative 30. What close threshold is, it's the opposite of open threshold. This is the decibel level. Your mic will stop picking up noise. For instance, if you're talking and somebody walks in the room and you whisper to them, if you whisper below the close threshold, your mic will turn off and people watching you won't be able to hear you whispering. You'll need to adjust this based on the volume of your voice and your background noise. I tend to talk a little lower, so I have to turn mine up. I have to turn mine down a little bit. If you talk a little higher, maybe turn it up a little bit more. All right, next is attack time, hold time, and release time. 
We're going to leave these default, but I'll explain to you what they are. So the default is 25 milliseconds for attack time, 200 milliseconds for hold time, and 150 milliseconds for release time. Attack time is how long it takes the noise gate to initiate. So as soon as you go above that noise gate, how long it takes your microphone to turn on. Hold time is how long your mic stays on after noise goes below the close threshold. So after you your voice goes down and you go below the close threshold, that's how long your microphone will stay on until after that happens. Release time is how long it takes for the microphone to go on mute once you go below the close threshold. So after you go below the close threshold, after 150 milliseconds, your microphone will cut out. You want it to be quick just in case, um, you know, somebody walks in in the background and then you get really quiet and you start talking to somebody. You want it to cut out right away so people don't hear what you're saying or put your microphone on mute. But yeah, just leave these default. Next thing we're going to do, go down the bottom, hit add, and we're going to go to compressor. Compressor is one of the most important filters to have, especially if you're one of those loud streamers who likes to scream a lot, likes to celebrate, you know, gets really super into it, doesn't talk really low like I do. First thing we're going to do with compressor, uh, it lowers the microphone volume from and it prevents peaking. And what peaking is, is what we talked about earlier. If you ever watch those old modern warfare videos and you hear somebody get a win or they get a crazy snipe and they scream really loud and it's that ear shattering noise. I hope you're not wearing headphones when you're listening to this type of noise. The compressor will put a cap to prevent that from happening. So and that's where uh, all of these come into place like the threshold so with the compressor if you go above that decibel level if you yell super loud you scream it will bring it back down to the max level which is the threshold so i have mine set to negative 17.5 so no matter how loud i yell it won't go above negative 17.5 decibels and that's right here on threshold ratio is how much compression is applied to a noise above the threshold the lower the compression the less uh, the lower the compression the less compression the higher the number the more compression i keep mine at four because i naturally talk a little bit lower if you talk a little bit higher raise it up a little bit to so move it slide it to the right attack time three milliseconds it's how fast your compressor compressor will be applied after you go above the threshold it works similar to the attack time in the noise gate release works similar to the attack time or release time in the noise gate and output gain. Output gain is one of the most important settings in this filter. Output gain, you want to start at zero. If you notice that your outputted voice is too low, like if you record and you can't hear yourself, increase this. I recommend increasing it by two decibels. Start low because if you start going high, you may hit that, um, you may have an issue with clipping. So start at zero. And if you're having trouble hearing yourself in recordings or on stream, move that up to the right but for now we're going to leave this at zero sidechain ducking source don't worry about that leave it default and the last thing is the vst 2.x plugin what the vst 2.x plugin is is a piece of software it's a piece of mixing software i included a link to it in the bio down below, I mean in the description. So what you're gonna do is after you download it from that link in the description, you'll go down to your filters, hit add, and it'll say VST 2.x plugin. You'll click on that. And when you're in VST 2.x plugin, you'll go to the drop down menu and click Marvel GEQ. And then if you don't have it open when interface is active, which means every time you open OBS, it pops up. Hit open plugin interface and it will make this pop up right here. This is your mixer for the Voxango Marvel GEQ mixer. If you're good with audio, you can go ahead and adjust these levels. Or if you want to learn, you can go ahead and adjust these levels on your own. It may seem a little overwhelming at first. What I recommend doing and what I personally do is I go over here to where it says presets. I do this drop down menu. I do session bank bright and bassy and then factory rom i set it to bright and bassy as well you can change this based on your voice and personal preference there's a bunch of different ones yeah presence you can see that the sliders adjust right there you can do side bass removal where you can see these adjust right here 
You could do lo-fi, ultra bass boost if you want to put some more bass in your voice. I personally prefer bright and bassy. All right, guys, so now I'm going to do a quick comparison of what it sounds like with the filters on and with the filters off. If you pay attention to this green bar down at the bottom, you will see when I turn my noise gate and my noise suppression and gain off that my green bar will hover around here. That's because it's picking up all the background noise, so pay attention to that. So let's get started. Follow me at twitch.tv forward slash rivtech. Now with the settings on, follow me at twitch.tv forward slash rivtech. Now, if you were paying attention to the bar down at the bottom, you'll notice that when I had all the filters off, my voice was going here into the red, which means that I'm peaking really bad and it's going to sound really bad on stream and it's going to sound like really low quality audio. I just wanted to give you guys a quick comparison of what it sounded like. All right, everybody. So those are my personal recommendations for audio filters. Remember, these are based on your voice and your setup. So make sure to adjust them accordingly. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions or if I missed anything in the video. And make sure to follow me on my social media right here down below. And I stream four days a week on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash rivtech. I'll see you guys next time.